Okay, so to start this off, I'm going to monopolize actually <laughs> and get us get us warmed up. Um, we last late last night decided okay, we got an extra hour. We were bored of all the games that we usually play. We decided well, let's pick something old enough so that if we get a hack for it, we can go in and fuck around. It doesn't. It's not going to matter any if we get banned. So we picked. We ended up deciding on Call of Duty Two, and. Uh, the problem ended up being is that we were running it on Steam, so none of the hacks we found would work when you because they're they're basically like uh, fake launchers. So it ended up not working with Steam. But we said, okay, let's just play it. We downloaded it anyway. It was just interesting to me to see um, what happens to game communities. I mean, we've talked before about what happens to game communities when there's basically no one left. Like that time when I jumped into uh, multiplayer and there was like one single dude in the entire game world who I called the last of the Mohicans. But this time, there's a lot of people playing, but they're all, they've all they all sort of balkanized into these little subsets of people who think they know what the ultimate expression of the game ought to be, and they're all equally fucking insane. So, like, I mean, one of the thriving servers is called Christian Snipers, and you go in, and the first map was some horrible mod, and it was, like, all Mario, Super Mario Brothers themed. And the first the first thing you hear when you get in is, like, I don't know, man. It sounded probably like that Tea Party guy dressing up like a Waffen SS on the weekend or something, trying to do his best, like, fucking German impersonation, telling us about the state of the battle. And then the next thing I know, someone gets a headshot, and it's like, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then there's, like, scripture scrolling on the top left of the screen about fucking Bible verses and shit about your aim being true or something. <laughs> and so that was like, okay, whatever, fuck this map. So we leave, and we go to another one and every time you join a server it, you have to download some fucking mod for it first and you know they're all auto installers so you have to sit there and wait and you're like okay great let's see uh what cool beavis and butthead sound effects can we add to, to the game to make it more exciting but um so it turns out that one of the groups i'd say there's about two two groups of players now and you can't find a straight pure game anymore and the one have this they call it extreme and they insist that you have to crouch you can't even fucking walk let alone run right so, and it's enforced by the fact that, like, if you if you walk anywhere for more than a second, it'll take your weapon away for for an allotted amount of time. And if you walk around for like three seconds or something, it'll just fucking start telling everyone in the server, you know, this guy's walking, he's walking, and then it'll fucking <laughs> oh kill you. So wait, so this is like this is like Crab Core of Duty. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the most I could figure out is they think that it's like tactical or realism or something, but instead, we're in this big map in Tunisia, in North Africa, and everyone's just creeping around like fucking slugs waiting for someone else to move and just like bitching anytime someone actually does stand up. Um, and then, and, and it just makes them easier to kill Why no, would you because care? they're harder to see, right? And you can only, you know, it's like it's a lot more static. Everyone just is in this huge map, and you just like are creeping around the entire time, you know. And it's not—I mean, that game is never about dodging, really. I mean, because on a mouse, if you see someone on your screen, chances are, if they're not behind cover, like right away, you're going to kill them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but I don't know where I was going. But I thought it was pretty fucking amazing, and, and so it was, are you, are it was you depressing. Play it more? Or no, I'm fucking done, dude. Unless I can get the hack to work, because that, <laughs> that was perfect. It's like God, I wasn't looking for aimbot or anything. All I wanted was just like a wall hack, so I can see everyone's outline through walls. And then the and the the, the reason being in that game, it's so fucking great, is that you get the smoke grenades, and you just smoke up the entire map as much as you possibly can, and then you jump on one of the mounted machine guns and just fucking blast everyone through, across the entire map through the smoke. I, it, just, it just makes me think of, you know, being a kid and you would play games with your friends and over time you would adjust the rules because people would constantly be sort of like arguing about it. I mean, I remember playing basketball with cousins who, you know, we would decide like that blocking was illegal because like we were terrible, and if you could block a shot, we were fucking never gonna fucking make a basket. You know? <laughs> exactly so you just you just sort of like make that shit up as you go along. You're like yeah, or you go over to some some friend's house, and it turns out they're like fucking dyslexic or something, and they have their own Scrabble rules, which basically mean any any combination of letters whatsoever are <laughs> for a game. <laughs> It all. It also sort of reminds me of you know, like sort of you know when you when you hear about uh, anthropologists or someone discovering like a lost tribe somewhere, like where the <laughs> like there was, <laughs> there were there were the um, 
there was a, a tribe of Jews in Africa. Um, I think I can't remember which country it was in. It was a war torn country, and Israel ultimately airlifted them out. And they had these, you know, the, their sort of practice of Judaism was very orthodox because of how long they had sort of been separated from, I guess, the the trunk of mainstream J- Judaism. It was just kind of like it was that was kind of wild. And like what you're describing here is how far people have gotten away from the original intent of Call of Duty and turned it into their own thing. Yeah, we essentially found the fucking FPS Kazars. <laughs> right. <laughs> you you need to go in there and be become like a Call of Duty 2 fundamentalist and like teach people how to, how to really play the game again. It bring always back, bring back the word. Or you could just be like uh you know Kurtz in uh, Apocalypse Now. You could just go in there and be king. You know? <laughs> well, that's what they were doing. That's what the people who would impose the, the rules. What was worse is so we start talking shit on them for their dumbass insipid server rules, and immediately everyone's like, "Oh man!" Like they have like, how can you have fucking bootlickers in a call of, in 2010 because you're a Call of Duty <laughs> server fucking host for some <laughs> stupid asinine mod you made? But nonetheless, they were there, and they kept trying to kick us, but. They had some rule where we didn't have we didn't set our player names and they won't let you just be unknown soldier which is the default in the game. So every time you die the system's constantly changing your name to something that they think is funny like, you know, bedwetter uh 203 or like pants shitter 568. <laughs> and it ended up working in our favor because to to kick you from the server, they have to input your name. So I just throw a grenade and kill myself real quick to change my name before they could type out the long ass bullshit that they decided and they're all laughing like, "Oh yeah, bedwetter, you're." But by the time they were making fun of me for being bedwetter, I was pants shitter. So I did, shit was like sliding right off of me. <laughs> but they were all just like and then they thought they got us, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, that was good. No one lasts long here with whatever uh, wing and a prayer is the fucking server or server admin. We'd wing and a prayer <laughs> in here doing that, that pimp uh, administration law. <laughs> <laughs> He's tough, man. He's the, the hammer. Is, uh, that really, like, this goes for any game franchise or any random, like, game franchise mod community. I mean, this this scary shit is everywhere, right? I mean... You could you could search any any random game and you're gonna find some, you know however unlikely and find some rabid community still totally devoted to it. Right, not every game, largely with multiplayer games, right? Sure, right. Well, um, I mean that's yeah. what it takes for a community to happen. I mean I think no, m- it most doesn't. single player there are huge most Fallout <laughs> communities even though it's not multiplayer, <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> okay, you got me. Final Fantasy. You got me. Sean.